Hello and welcome to MMA Net Real Talk. I'm your host, Sebastian Vendel Martinez, longtime reporter and writer at MMA Net. And this is where I just basically unscripted and unedited give my thoughts on all things MMA combat sports. So it's been a, a bit of a slow news day, uh, to be honest. Not a whole lot coming out yet. I'm sure by the time I post this, it will probably be like, you know, a picogram scandal or something. Uh, just to, you know, mess with me. But uh, there has been some stuff going on in the news, so let's just run through a little bit of it. Uh, Damian Maya is looking to... Uh, uh, he wants to fight Diego Sanchez, who is fighting this weekend against Michael Chiesa. That is a fight I think Chiesa wins. Uh, but, uh, you know, say what you will about Diego Sanchez, he had a really tough streak for a while where... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so between 2012, no, even between 2011 and 2016, he did not. No, oh, sorry, the Jim Miller match actually he did pretty well in. But uh, let's just okay, at least say until 2015, he did not have a single convincing win there. Uh, the unanimous decision win to Martin Campman was. Controversial at best and uh, flat out robbery at worst. He lost to Ellenberger. He somehow won a split decision over Takanori Gomi by punching the air. I thought I was gonna sneeze. <laughs> there it came. Uh, then he lost to Gilbert Melendez. He lost to Miles Jury. He again won a really controversial split decision, this time over Ross Pearson, but he lost to Ricardo Lamas uh, in a featherweight bout, which, I mean, he did not look good at featherweight. And uh, 2017 was tough for him too. He got knocked out by both Ally Aquinta and Matt Brown, both of them in the first round. And a lot of people started wondering, is this the end for, uh, for Diego Sanchez? But he came back <laughs> better than ever, to be honest. Uh, or nah, okay, not not better than ever. Let me take that back. But he came back way better than I anyway thought that he would. He uh, defeated Craig White handily, and Craig White is an underrated guy. You could tell just by the small moments that White had in that fight that he's a dangerous, dangerous fighter with great knees. And uh, Sanchez did exactly the right thing uh, uh, by you know taking him down and just completely mauling and controlling him on the ground. After that, he TKO'd Mickey Gall, uh, Gall, uh, Gall, Gall, uh, um, yeah, however you want to say it, uh, in yet another impressive performance. They won him a performance bonus. Uh, like I said, I don't see him beating Chiesa, but regardless, win or lose, I'm kind of down for Maya versus Sanchez. I mean, if we go by Sanchez's suffocating wrestling style, it could definitely make things a little bit interesting to see how long and how much he's willing to actually engage with Maya on the ground. Is he willing to hold top position but risk, you know, a few submissions, or will he elect to keep it completely standing? Uh, Maya, we kind of know what he wants to do every fight. It's the easiest game plan in the world to break down, no matter who we, you know, who he faces. It's, you know, get attached to him by any means necessary and then choke him out. Uh, and uh, my eyes looked, he's looked pretty solid. I mean, he also had a bit of a tough, uh, rough patch. Uh, he lost three fights in a row. Tyron Woodley, Colby Covington, and Kamaru Usman. Three fighters with very similar fighting styles, you know. Uh, guys with, you know, some power in their hands. Uh, more so Woodley, less so Covington. Uh, and a very, very strong wrestling base. And, you know, they kind of did manage to neutralize a lot of uh, Maya submissions by either not engaging too much or making sure that they, even while he was grounded, the his opponents, they kind of kept the fight standing in, like they were engaging enough to keep Maya grounded, but not engaging enough to get stuck in a submission. But since then, he bounced back in a very impressive way over Lyman Good with a nice submission win, and uh, most recently he defeated Anthony Rocco Martin. Uh, so. So for my for my money, I mean, why not? Why not? I mean, Damian Maya, he's he's one of those you know just good guys in the sport, uh, real a real martial artist. You know, he he's always a guy. You know, he's gonna play by the rules. He's gonna he's gonna take the fights the UFC give him, and 
and he's just gonna go out there and do his absolute best, try to submit the guy. I'm, I'm really glad that he came back to his roots, because there was a little while when, you know, fans were calling him K1 Maya, when it's like he decided to just kickbox with everybody, and it, it wasn't that great. <laughs> like, fans were loving it when he went back to his grappling roots. Uh, so, for my money, Sanchez versus Damien Maya. Damien Maya's, you know, last, or one of his last fights in the UFC. He's not sure if he wants to keep fighting just this year or next year as well, but he will be retiring sometime next year. Uh, and I say, yeah, you know, why not? I think that could be a fun, fun fight. So moving on to the, I guess, kind of main story. I, I wasn't actually planning on, on making a video today just simply because it's been a little bit of a slow news day. But a good buddy of mine, Jim Edwards, uh, who used to work for MMA News, now he's for uh, Fighters Only uh, and his normal day job. Uh, Darren Till, uh, gave a lengthy interview, it was like 40 minutes long, I would highly recommend watching it. Some of the seating and lighting arrangement is uh, was a little bit uh, weird for my money, but uh, yeah, whatever. It's uh, What was said was very, very solid, and uh, there were a lot of interesting things that he brought up. Uh, obviously, the loss to Masvidal, uh, he said that Masvidal was very respectful afterwards, and that obviously, you know, it, it is something especially for a young up-and-coming fighter like that, there was one part which I thought was very interesting in the interview where uh, Till mentioned that, you know, he had he felt he had this air of, of invincibility about him, that, you know, he could never get knocked out, and that he might have gotten a little bit overzealous in the fight against Masvidal. I mean, obviously, he did great in the first round. It was close, you know, he, he, he hit Masvidal with some really hard shots. But that sort of realization that kind of makes me feel like you know despite a two fight losing skid never being a good thing in some ways the loss or a setback could be a good thing for Till's overall development as a fighter uh, perhaps taking a few less unnecessary risks perhaps not getting a little wild and uncontrolled uh, uncontrolled and um, you know perhaps being a little bit more more technical with his fighting uh, it was very, very interesting. He talked a little bit about uh, Ben Askren, uh, Mike Perry, and of course the Tenerifa incident where uh, he was involved. Uh, obviously, you know, the Daily Mail is like a, like a scandal paper in, in the UK. So when they sort of were the first ones out with the story, it, we, everything had to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt from the way that Till describes it. It was definitely not as dramatic as it was made out to be. He said he was at like a, a bachelor party and they were kind of horsing around in the hotel room and you know there was some stuff thrown about but they said that or he said that it wasn't like they were trashing the room much like the reports first said. But like any good you know scandal newspaper that, that it would obviously be the way that you want to to write your headline. Uh, he said that regarding the whole like taxi Grand Theft Auto thing, uh, that it wasn't actually him that he showed up to the scene when the car was found and uh, the police recognized him and they brought him in. And so it was a very interesting uh, interview. Uh, I guess the biggest takeaway, if you're going to go completely black and white, is that yes, he is planning on fighting again this year. So that brings us to... Now that Darren Till is, you know, he's making it sure that uh, he, he wants to return 2019, who can he fight? Well, it's a little hard to say with any certainty because neither us or Darren Till himself is completely sure on exactly when this year is going to be coming back. I mean, he's still got a couple months. So it was announced that Colby Covington is going to be fighting Robbie Lawler uh, for UFC Newark, the main event. And that is a fight that I kind of expect uh, Covington to win. Uh, I just think that, you know, he obviously won't be taking any risks versus Lawler, who, you know, just hits like a truck. Uh, now, the way I see it, if Covington comes out on top there, then Darren Till versus Robbie Lawler would not be a bad fight. Uh, the only thing that it would perhaps have going against it would be the fact that if that is the case, then Robbie Lawler would have lost uh, f one, two, three, yeah, three, no, sorry, four out of his last five. So we might want to give him somebody a little bit lower on, on the totem pole. Uh, 
he is currently ranked at uh, Robbie Lawler, that is. He is ranked at uh, 10th place, whereas Darren Till is ranked at number 6. Uh, we've got Rafael Dos Anjos taking on Leon Edwards. There has been uh, a lengthy back and forth between Darren Till and Leon Edwards. A, a pretty respectful one, but more sort of like a local UK rivalry type of uh, uh, spat. And uh, the way I see it, whoever loses that fight, they're a pretty good candidate for, uh, for facing Darren Till. Because whoever loses, if it's Dos Anjos, he's going to fall down in the rankings. If it's uh, Edwards who loses, he's at number 11. And I, I just don't feel that, you know, we should throw Darren Till right in against a top five guy again. I, I say give it a little bit of time. Let him sort of work his way back up. Uh, Dana White has been, you know, very clear and open about uh, his opinion, saying that he felt that maybe they, uh, you know, they handled the stuff with Darren Till too fast. And that, that's a little bit, uh, Darren Till, he touches a little bit on that as well in the interview, which is uh, very interesting as well. Um, aside from that, uh, the one fighter that kind of does stick out to me as a as a possibility is uh, uh, Elizo dos uh, Elizo Zaleski dos Santos. Now he is not a big name, but he's coming off of five or six straight wins in the welterweight division, and style-wise, with his capoeira background, I think this would be fireworks. Uh, I think Dos Santos versus Till would be a really fun, entertaining fight, but it's probably not that likely simply based on name value alone. Otherwise, there is the ever-questioned fight with Mike Perry. It keeps getting brought back. Uh, people keep talking about it. Darren Till versus, versus uh, Mike Perry. Is it going to happen? Uh, that would be a fun fight. Uh, I mean, obviously, any one of these fights, if it's actually possible, it all depends on when Darren Till returns. But the way I see it, those are the most probable and best uh, fights to make, uh, both in terms of styles and, and ranking. Uh, if you guys have you know, a different suggestion of who Darren Till should fight when he gets back, instead of just calling me a retard whose job I can't do as good as Chael Sonnen, let me know who you guys think uh, would be a good return fight for Till in the comments below. And so yeah, we're actually going to cut this episode a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, there's not you know, a whole lot of uh, super stories going around right now. So, But we will start previewing UFC 239, if not tomorrow, then maybe Thursday and uh, sort of breaking down some of those fights and uh, coming to some, uh, you know, coming to some picks. And it, it's, as always, it would be fun to hear you guys' thoughts on who you think is going to win. Is Thiago Santos the guy to dethrone John Jones? I don't know. He's got one hell of a puncher's chance, though. I'll tell you that much. And we did see this weekend between Francis Ngannou and Junior Dos Santos how much a puncher's chance really can do. But yeah, that does it for this episode of MMA News Real Talk. I'm your host, Sebastian Vendel Martinez, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.